Hey, what's up, Idausa here, and in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about a new language learning tool that is very simple, but very powerful and very fun that I call the conversation game. And to introduce it to you, I'm gonna start by giving a background on how we came up with it, what the problem we're trying to solve is here. Now, you wanna learn a language, and most people, when they do that, they think, okay, cool, well, what's language, vocabulary, and grammar? Let me sit here and flashcard these vocab words. Let me sit here and learn these grammar rules. Let me apply both of those together and translate sentences. And as I discussed in the last video and many other videos, this does not work simply because the act of flashcarding and translating is a different act from the act of conversation. The act of conversation is a physical, spiritual process like we described in the last video. And this is a purely cerebral process. So not only is it just a completely different process, when you do the cerebral, it actually inhibits your capacity to flow in the physical spiritual because now you're stuck in your head. So that's the problem that we kept encountering. And of course, you already have ways to help people with the physical aspect of mimicking, but people would always ask after they've learned pronunciation and hearing through my program, great, well, how do I go about actually learning vocab and grammar? You know, can you make a vocab and grammar program? And I've always been like, it's not quite it, like it's not, you guys are asking the wrong question. You think it's a process of studying stuff because that's what academic training has taught you, that's how learning is. But I didn't learn my languages that way. I, I go to the country and to start flowing with people and asking questions like, hey, how do you say this thing? Oh, okay, uh, bah, bah, bah. But I understood that a large number of people, probably most people, are not gonna be willing to jump into the deep end that way. And like anything else, it's just way better if you have the flow channel. For those of you who don't know, imagine a graph with um, difficulty on the y-axis and skill on the x. And you wanna find that space where the skill matches the difficulty. Your skill matches the difficulty of the, of, the, of the game you're playing. If it's too difficult, you're in the red zone, you're overwhelmed. If it's too boring, then you'll be disengaged. So if we take conventional language learning, It'll either be too boring, like I'm sitting here being like, hello, hola, speak, hablar, I, yo, right? I'm just doing these different little translations in here. Or it's like, okay, great. Now I'll talk to this native speaker. Hola, que tal, amigo? And you're like, uh, uh, Joe, uh, uh, right? And that's red zone, way too difficult. So how do we flow channel you that? How do you get the opportunity to actually practice conversation without being overwhelmed by conversation? How can you develop a intuitive knowledge and feel for grammar and expanded vocabulary without getting st stuck in your head and doing it in a very cerebral manner. How do you do that? And what, when I first started to finally attack this problem a couple years ago, I, okay, let me develop some sort of solution for people to help them flow channel into conversation. The first thing that came to my mind was role play. Because I'd see people on conversation practice calls, you know, on iTalkie and other places, and they're always like super boring, eh? Like, oh, so what you do today? Oh, you know, I ate a Pop-Tart, watched some TV, went to bed. And then the next day, it's the same conversation, and like, you kind of run out of things to talk about. Like, oh, yes, let's uh, talk about this uh, TV show, I guess. And the problem there is that you're just sitting in front of a computer screen talking to somebody, and, th and even that is way better than just writing you know, text. Even that is not real. It's not an actual embodied situation where you're out and you're speaking to people and like, you know, trying to get the motorcycle taxi to like, stop ripping you off or you know, talk to this pretty lady over here like, oh, what's your name, hola, como estas? All these different things you actually, that I actually went through to learn the language it pales in comparison. But of course, again, not everyone has the opportunity to just travel and immerse themselves in an environment. What can you do short of that immersion to practice conversation? And the next best thing, of course, is a role play. So I'll say, ah, okay, what I need to design is some sort of role play theater-based conversation curriculum. And in doing so, I was like, okay, well, really what we need, we can practice these different situations, you know, being at a grocery store or fantastical situations, like you're robbing a bank and then this guy's getting away. These are all things that we do in our coaching. But even before that, even before you enter into like a, a context with a scene and characters and actions, if you're a pure beginner, you still need to know like 
basic vocabulary and basic ways to construct sentences. So I'm like, okay, let's go even deeper than that. What if we just created the minimal viable interaction and you just teach people how to have that interaction and then once they learn how to do that basic interaction, then within that bat interaction they can practice smoothing things out so they stop stuttering and, and all that kind of stuff. They can embody the spirit of the language without having to focus on what's happening in the scene. They can just focus on one thing at a time. They can focus on the grammar concept without focusing on the topic and whatnot because that's the issue. The main challenge is having too many things in your head. So if I thought you were to a bank robber scene and you have to think about what to say on the fly, then, and you, but you don't have that foundation of like what the word for bank is and what the word for you and I and run is, it's not gonna work. So what is that basic thing? And thus we have the conversation game. So I'll start by demonstrating the conversation game to you, playing with myself. I'll show videos some other time about our students playing it with our, with our native practice partners. For now, I'm just gonna play it with myself so you get the gist of it. So, simplest version will look something like this. Two people, me and Lizzie Dawson, all right? I'm like, I'll do an English first. You eat cheese? I eat cheese. Nah, I don't eat cheese. I eat marshmallows. You eat marshmallows? Yeah, you eat marshmallows and you cook s'mores with them. I cook s'mores with them? Nah, I don't cook s'mores with them. I rub them on my face. You rub marshmallows on your face? Yeah, you rub marshmallows on your face and you make a mask out of it. I make a mask out of marshmallows on my face? Nah, I don't make a mask out of marshmallows on my face. I make a art painting with marshmallows on my face. You make an art painting? All right, so I'm, you start to see a gist, right? So what's happening is that there's this back and forth going on where the next person is responding to the statement of the last person, right? If, you, if you've done theater, improv, or whatever, you're, you're familiar with a lot of these different elements, we've kind of modified things for our language learning purposes here. And that's the basic gist of it. You're just kind of playing off of what the last person said. And because it's the minimal necessary thing for you to like respond, you, you don't have to wait, spend so much energy figuring out as you would in a larger scene. So it's like a basic minimum type deal. And even that game I just demonstrated to you would be too challenging for a brand new person, say like in Spanish. So again, we break things down into the most basic steps and then kind of walk you through each one to build yourself up to higher levels of complexity within the conversation game. But we'll just say you're in this level one game. You know, we have a recent student for French who on our assessment call, when he would speak, he had lots of what we call chop, which is where you're like, um, um, uh, uh, or your eyes are going up all over the place and you're not really present. This chop, you wanna eliminate. So it doesn't matter how much vocabulary and grammar you know, if you're choppy, you're not gonna flow. Chop is the antithesis of flow. So if you're a choppy speaker, your number one priority would be to eliminate the chop. But if you try to eliminate the chop while you're doing a monologue on the state of you know, the economy in the world right now, then you probably have too much to think about while you're also trying to control your chop. So what you would do then is get into a very basic conversation game with someone. So if I'm doing it, say in French, like the students, then I'd be like, tu manges des fruits? Oui, je mange des fruits. Et je bois de la bière. Tu bois de la bière? Non, tu bois pas de la bière. Tu bois de jus. Right, and then we go back and forth. The first time you do it, your student's quite choppy. So we slow it down very slow. Tu manges des fruits? And then he takes his time to speak, just focusing on the one goal of not stuttering, of not breaking eye contact, of being relaxed in his body. Oui, je mange des fruits. Et j'aime beaucoup les manger. And here he can just do that. And then once he's able to control the chop, at the slow motion, we can speed it up. And now he's playing the game, but he's playing a bit faster. And then once he has it smooth and he has it fast, then we can really infuse the spirit into the game, have him sound more like a French person, have him be more playful with it. And it continues to be enjoyable and it's giving him those necessary minutes 
of repetition and time to be infused with that spirit to get the reps in on that vocabulary. If you're a brand new student, we actually don't do conjugation. We do something called simple speak. So in English, instead of having you be like, um, you're, you're going to the show tonight, we'd be like, you go show tonight, and you practice in that form first. And then later on, you can refine your grammar. So we have all these different techniques for keeping the game matched to your level. It's also very powerful in expanding your vocabulary. One major problem with the kind of conventional approaches to learning vocabulary is I give you a flash deck with a bunch of random words on it. Like, oh, these are the words related to um, ba you know, playing sports. Basketball, basketball, baloncesto, soccer, football, right? And then you're just kind of flashcarding it. But the problem is, you're, again, you're out of context. You're not actually, you're not, all you're learning how to do is remember flashcards in your bedroom by yourself which is why when you show up in conversation, you blank out and all of a sudden those flashcards are tossed out the window, floating in the wind. And it's because that's not how the brain works. Things need to be associated to an actual context. And the more emotional and the more dynamic and engaged you are in that context, the more deeply that memory is going to be sewed within you. So when you're in the right spirit and you're having fun with it, and then you're coming to the point where you're playing the simple conversation game, I don't eat cheese, I eat... Then you learn what we call the magic questions. You learn how to say in your target language, how do you say? So in Spanish, that's como se dice. So if I'm playing the conversation game in Spanish, I'm like, yo no como queso. Yo como, como se dice avocado. Aguacate, 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 aguacate. Yo no como queso. Yo como aguacate. See what I did there? So with your partner you're playing this game and then new words are emerging we even have a tool to capture these new vocabulary that organically emerges out of your game interaction so you can review it and keep playing the game with it later use it in different sentences use it in different meanings again make a distinction between practicing these sentences by yourself just kind of reading them on paper and repeating them in a rote memory type of way versus spontaneously utilizing them in a conversation in response to an un unpredictable thing that your partner says in that moment. Completely different context and way more effective at actually getting you to embody the vocabulary. And then final point I'll make is for grammar. We're building out a kind of progression for every single grammar element organized in um, order of their importance. So starting with the most basic stuff like conjugating in the present tense, if you have a language that conjugates, and then working your way from there. So you start off as a beginner in our program doing this simple speak, I go eat, you know go eat. And then once you have the flow down, once you're smooth, once you're spirited, then at some point we say, okay, great. Now we're gonna play this game, but now you're going to do it with proper grammar in the present tense. So you like, kind of learn what that is. Tu comes, yo como. And then you just play the game with those points. Tu comes naranja? No, yo no como naranja, yo como. Salada, ensalada. Tú comes ensalada? Sí, yo como ensalada. See what's happening? Because I'm in an interaction, I'm actually talking to someone, I'm, I'm actually embodying that conjugation and it's not just a cerebral idea that I'm putting here in my short-term cerebral memory to be forgotten next week. So hopefully that makes a bit more sense to you. You can take any grammar concept, feed it into this game, play it, have fun with it, and then walk out very rapidly just having that in you. Then next stage is you go and you role play a scene that's either relevant to your life, like a transaction or speaking to your, your girlfriend's mom who doesn't speak English. Whatever situation is, you can work with your partner in our program and role play that scenario so you're confident in it. And then of course you go out into the real world and then you speak these things. But that heart of it at the conversation game allows you to get your reps in, allows you to embody the technical grammar and the vocabulary of the language in a lively context with minimal uh, effort put into you imagining the actual scene and thinking up uh, you know, intuitive responses in it. You just keep going back and forth in this game. And the game I showed you just now is a basic version of it. As you progress, you can get more, more advanced versions of the game that make it more fun and more dynamic and more challenging. So it kind of goes on forever, but it's a very powerful tool. So later on, I'll show videos of people playing it within our program. And if you join us for our beta test in a few weeks, 
then you can try the game out yourself, play with partners, play with some of our native speakers. And also, you will learn how to play with an AI chatbot. So I'll leave that cliffhanger for you now. That is what I'm gonna talk about in my next video. The issue is that if you're playing with a native speaker, you need to schedule that time with that person. Um, unless he's a friend of yours or someone you know personally, you'll have to pay money for that if it's someone you're hiring for that job. And that's all fine, you know, you wanna invest and actually get good at a skill. But wouldn't it be nice if you can just practice the conversation game at any time you wanted without having to pay any money for it? You just whip your phone out and you practice the game. Well, you can do that and I'll show you how that works on the next video. So if you wanna check that out, like, subscribe, join the mailing list as well to know about the beta test coming on so you can try it out for yourself soon. And leave a comment in this chat if you like what I'm saying or you have any questions or, or commentary and I will try to look at it and answer you. Thanks for watching.